is definitions and we have a new one today there's lots of laws on the books having to do with age restriction do's and don'ts how this or that works in the physical world we have the ten commandments which is a big hunk of laws a code supposedly from God on conduct we have laws of physics and gravity to explain how things work in nature and how you and I work in it. There's acts of government that become laws, codes, rules, regulations, all to prevent or allow you freedoms, privacy, and action. There are also universal or spiritual laws. Some say there are 12. Deepak Chopra says there are seven spiritual laws of success. Edwin Gaines says there are four spiritual laws of prosperity. And some I have read say there are just four spiritual laws. uh, laws. Others say there are 36. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote a famous essay called Spiritual Laws. And I I believe, because I looked at them all this week as I was preparing for this talk, I believe they're all wonderful, really. They all define the spiritual workings of this universe, breaking down how it works and how to work in, as, and through it. The title of this talk is It's the Law. There were other titles I considered using. um, Holmes Schmoms, Where's My New Car? Uh, I'm Divine, Why Don't Others Act Like It? Uh, Help, I Got a Brain Freeze and I Can't Demonstrate all about law and previously some in this month a lot in last month i talked about authenticity the revealing of the divine within you talked about that today perception what you perceive influences that which you conceive and flavors what you will achieve which is the nature of my book the affirmation revolution 52 weeks to a fabulous life I've talked about the power of decision based on a great book. One of the best books there is out there, The Power of Decision by Raymond Charles Barker, where we mind the gap between what we want and what we have. We've talked about how mental science is like a search engine optimization program, you know, feeding our universal Google, so to speak, with a list of sites within the mind to visit, which harbor thoughts and beliefs, those sights in the minds, principles and practices that support our good, that allow us to bust through, soar, and zoom. But what I wanted to define this week, interestingly changed as I explored the topic today, that day, all week, I realized It all comes down to one spiritual law, a law that refers to perspective and belief, cause and effect, oneness and allness. I mean, what else is there? But it changed. It changed what I decided to talk about today. Um, So interesting, so fascinating when that happens, when you have this idea, I'm going to talk about this, and I start um, figuring out how I'm going to break it down. And as I'm doing that, and as I'm writing it, and as I'm conceiving it, It changes because in all those laws, all those, let's say the most amount, 36 spiritual laws, this law is not in it. But this law is the most important one. You know, I grew up in Missouri, the gateway to the West, where West, westward bound settlers and and their barges and steamboats and railways and trails moved goods and people through Um, the other side in the United States, the western part of the United States, to expand their opportunities. Missouri is called the Show Me State. And legend has it that a congressman, Willard Duncan Van Diver, during an 1899 naval banquet in Philadelphia, said this, 
I come from a state that raises corn and cotton and cockleburs and Democrats and frothy eloquence neither convinces nor satisfies me. I am from Missouri. You got to show me. Well, none of the legend tells of a miners' strike in Leadville, Colorado in the mid 1890s and a number of miners um, from the lead district of Southwest Missouri were imported to take place of uh, strikers that were happening at that time. And these miners were from Joplin, Missouri and were unfamiliar with the Colorado mining methods and required frequent instructions on the differences and the changes in how to do it. And pit bosses began saying, oh, that man is from Missouri. You'll have to show him. It's not that we're <laughs> stupid um, or untrusting in Missouri. You got to make us believe you. You got to give us clear instructions. And the universe or the law of cause and effect is like that, is like Missouri. It's constantly asking you, show me. Show me, show me what it is you have decided to have in your life. Show me what action you are taking. Show me where your mind is, your perspective is, your decision-making is on that which you claim you have declared to have. Because talk is cheap. Thoughts and ideas, they're nice. Thoughts and ideas backed by feelings, much nicer. Thoughts and ideas backed by feelings and embodied in our very being through our imaginative powers, through envisioning the idea and incorporating ourselves into it, into our subconscious and belief system, creating the psychological state in which um, one would hold a proposition or premise to be true, to be now. Well, now you're talking. And the universe is listening and the universe is hearing. But like I said, the law I want to talk about surpasses even the law of cause and effect. A gentleman named Albert Hubbard, who was an Illinois philosopher, writer, editor, school teacher. He wrote, man is not what he thinks he is, but what he thinks he is. Or as the Talmud says, we see the world not as it is, but as we are. So who and what do you think you are and why? The universe is like the perfect mate. It listens and understands actively, clearly, and sometimes well, the universe all the time, impersonally, and yet with an unconditional love and with the power of creation, right there. When it comes to the law of cause and effect or the law of attraction or correspondence or compensation, whatever you want to call that law, like President Harry Truman of Independence, Missouri, said the buck stops here. And where's the here? What's the here? Here. Here. I point to the brain, I point to the head, but I'm actually talking about your mind. Your mind is something that surpasses the brain power, really. Your mind is what encompasses all the universal uh, divinity that is within you. Yeah, the universe is like my home state. It simply says, show me. Show me in your belief system that this is what you have declared to have in your life. Show me the real you is the biggest thing. What's the real you? What's the authentic you? The God-filled, peaceful, mindful, all-forgiving, loving, bold, brave, succulent, empowered you. Show me that. Show me the one who knows who they are, no matter the conditions. The one who understands the laws of divine oneness, pure potentiality as above, as so below, as within, so without. Show me that mind that is understanding and living the laws of detachment, affirmation, prayer, meditation, and choice. 
who knows the laws of purpose, intention, clarity, vibration, and desire, the laws of resistance, reflection, rejection, attention, and flow. The universe constantly is saying, show me, show me you living the laws of giving, inspired action, gratitude, faith, blessings, rhythm, energy, opulence. All of these are laws. All these laws that break down and describe the one law. Can you define that one law? Do you know the one law I'm referring to? Let me tell you a story. Once, thousands of years ago, were six men of a country called Indistan who went to see an elephant, not familiar what, what an elephant was. Now, all of them were blind, these six men, and each by observation were there to satisfy their mind by a physical observation and thus an intellectual observation. So the first approached the elephant and happening to fall against his broad and sturdy side at once began to fall, God bless me. But the elephant is very like a wall. And the second one who happened to be feeling the tusk cried, oh, what have we here? So very round and smooth and sharp. No, to me. Tis mighty clear the wonder of an elephant is very like what we call a spear. And the third approached the animal, happening to take the squirming trunk within his hands, thus boldly spake, I see the elephant is very much like a snake. And the fourth reached out an eager hand and felt about the knee of the elephant. No, 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 my friends, he said. What most this wondrous beast is like is mighty plain. Tis clear enough, the elephant is very like a tree. And the fifth, the fifth blind man who ch chanced to touch the ear, big ears, said, even the blindest man can tell what this resembles most. Deny the fact who can, this marvel of an elephant is very much like a fan. And then the sixth, no sooner had begun about the beast to grope and seizing on the swinging tail that fell within his scope, cried, well, I see, quoth he, the elephant, dear boys, is very much like a rope. And so these men of in though stand learned and blind as many a man, disputed loud, 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 loud and long, each in his own opinion, exceeding stiff and strong. And though each was partly in the right, all were by truth in the wrong. Truth, truth. What is the truest of the laws? Is that a fair question? I've sp spoken of the laws of life, of higher consciousness, of higher frequency, of success, of prosperity, describing and defining the spiritual, the universal, and all for all as all. We have and will continue to speak of them every week, all the time. It's one of these laws, one of these ideas and tools to use these laws, they're, they're, they're to be learned. They're to be remembered, they're to be revealed in our lives, they're to be gleaned from, adhered to, followed, and practiced. These are the laws that culminate in the law of the highest, the law of the authentic. These are the laws that merely describe the chapters, the parts, like the elephant, the scrolled, the plated, the, the tableted ideas that define the most mystical of the laws. There's an ancient legend <laughs> that has it that when God was creating the earth, it was approached by four angels. And the first one was the scientist angel and asked, well, wow, how are you doing that? And the second, a very philosophical angel asked, 
why are you doing it? And the third, who was very altruistic, asked, can I be of help? And the fourth, who was a real estate agent, I think um, his name was uh, Angel Keller Williams, asked, what is it worth and how much can I get it for? And then slowly walked up a fifth angel. And she was watching in wonder. And after a few minutes, started to applaud in sheer delight. This one, this angel, was the mystic. This describes the law of you. That's the law. That's the highest of the law. That's the law that is not listed in any of these lists of laws. The law of you. A law found in the energy of the mystic you. And there is mysticism in each and every one of you. There is a, a wonderment, an awe of, of life, of nature, of the universe, of the powers within. That is the authentic you. That is the true you. That is the law of you to follow. And if you don't feel much like a mystic, remember this story. A Buddhist monk approaches a burger food truck and says, hey, make me one with everything, please. And the Buddhist monk pays with a $20 bill, which the vendor takes, puts in the cash box, closes the lid, says, thank you very much. And the monk's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, sir, where's my change? And the vendor replies, oh, Change comes from within. As Ernest Holmes wrote, there's a power in the universe greater than you are, and you get to use it. That is the law of you. The power in the universe that is within you, and yet greater than you are, that you get to use. That is the law of you. That is the power of you. You are it. It is you works through with worth with you works through you expresses life as you and is always with you no matter what as neville goddard famously and bluntly said you are god you are the god of you that is the law of you you are the god of you you are the power to reveal the divinity within. You are the power to vibrate at the speed of the, of the divine. That is the law of you to bust through, soar, and zoom into your greatest high life. The power of you is to do all of those things. The power of you is that divinity that is within you to reveal into your life that which you have decided to have, that which you have decided to have. Follow those principles. Reveal the divinity within. Vibrate at the speed of the divine. Bust through, soar, and zoom into your greatest life. Live by those principles. Follow those principles. Be those principles. Why? Why? Because it's the law. Thank you so much. Namaste.